So introducing our next speaker, um, again, actually a company very close to my heart, having been a customer of theirs for the last 18 years. Um, so very keen to understand how, uh, how George is keeping us ticking here. Um, so George Guthrie graduated with a Bachelor of Science from University of Leicester. He spent his professional career working on IT projects, ranging from the London 2012 Olympic Games through to supporting mobile phone networks O2's 25 million customers. Having spent the last four years in major incident management, George now manages the team within O2 that manages their critical incidents. So please offer a round of applause for George. As I move along. Excellent. So, 9.30 a.m. It was the 3rd of August, 2012, and uh, the first daily session of athletics um, at the London Olympic Games. So the whole kind of world was on kind of looking at London, the 80,000 people in the stadium, but also, crucially, the kind of millions watching at home. And, and really, the kind of almost pride of Britain, where if we mess this up, it's going to be a little bit embarrassing. Um, and so at the time, I, I was working as a, a team of four who were responsible for the result systems in athletics. So that's fundamentally the traditional kind of timing and scoring block. So you've got, say, Usain Bolt there from the start line to the end and actually classifying those world records, classifying those winners and losers um, through to every single place where we'd output results. So, for example, the traditional obvious one there with the scoreboard, um, but also how we kind of feed um, internet news media, uh, commentator systems and kind of TV graphics. So crucially, with the millions watching at home and you, you kind of stand up with a start list and you get your nice fancy start list of, um, of who's racing, what their PBs are and results. Quite, you know, important stuff because otherwise people would be a bit blind to what's going on. 30 minutes before, so 9.30, first race uh, at 10 o'clock, uh, the TV graphic system goes dead. We're realising... In 30 minutes' time, we're about to go live to the world, and we're not going to be able to tell anyone about any of the athletes or anything that's going on. Now, looking back now, I can't... I'd never want to be in that situation again, put it that way. Um, but you realise in the importance of a major incident, just, just how crucial it is to get it fixed. You don't have time to panic. Um, you, you look back after and look at the doubts, but crucially, our, you know, our one focus was on one getting services back, and, and two, actually trying to coordinate a plan B as to well, what's going to happen if we do fail. Um, you know, are we going to go live? Are we going to delay the start? So thankfully, you know, we all kind of put our heads together, um, worked with our teams in one room, um, and thankfully, kind of 10 minutes to go, uh, we'd, we'd adjusted some of the software. It was a connection issue um, with the software. So uh, we'd adjusted that. So 10 minutes to go, we'd, we'd had our start list ready. And thankfully, yeah, I think 400 metres was the first event we'd had, um, we'd had TV graphics back for start lists. And, um, and this was really kind of my starting point in major incident management. And, and I realised just kind of how much I enjoyed being kind of at the forefront of, of well, really anything that can go wrong um, and putting yourself at the front and kind of make, standing up tall and saying, you know what, we're going to fix this. Um, and that's the kind of well, reason, I'll go into my about me in a second, why... I've been so keen in major incident management. Um, so since then, um, I've started on a graduate scheme at O2, uh, and thankfully, as, as part of that scheme, they offered quite a nice flexibility to say, well, if you, you like to try, kind of try a new area, give, you know, give it a go. And within five months, I'd uh, already eyed up the major incident department as, uh, from my experiences at the Olympics, as the one that, that I wanted to work on. Um, so I started on there yeah, as a kind of major incident manager, kind of graduate assistant, um, adjusted um, to a full major incident role, major incident manager role, um, and then got promoted into that into more of the kind of team leader for that area, which is when I started getting involved with X Matters. So that was um, late 2015. Um, and crucially, then starting to look at tools that we can do to improve our incident process. Um, and as of, yeah, last month, we've uh, taken over from managing, managing the team. So, who are we to? So, I think probably it's quite a well-known brand name, but as a, as a bit of a summary, we, we support a third of the UK economy, uh, so in terms of our connections. So, from the traditional 25 million customers um, through to 125 million voice calls a day. But crucially, so much of that and the supporting of the economy is on, is on connectivity. So, 
as an example, uh, a London bus. Now, every single London bus has, has an O2 SIM card in it. So that means when you're sitting down at your bus stop, you, uh, and it has your little kind of dot matrix display that says your bus is in three minutes, that's from our track location technology to say where it is. Now, that's great for a consumer, but TfL Transport for London, their biggest use for it is actually in billing. So when you step onto the bus and you get your Oyster card or your contactless card and you touch it on, that connects via the O2 SIM card to say, oh, yes, they've got money on their card or, oh, no, they need to, they need to top up. So when our connectivity fails, that's an example of where TfL can't, can't charge for any bus routes. And, and with 7 million journeys a day, you know, they can't afford to just turf everyone off the bus. That's a case of they're having to let 7 million people on for free. So a real example of how kind of connectivity is key outside of the traditional uh, kind of phone network and making calls. So going back to this, um, it's not just connectivity for corporates, it's connectivity across businesses. Uh, so O2 Wi-Fi, uh, examples say McDonald's and Costa are our two biggest O2 Wi-Fi uh, partners. If you walk into any of them, you're getting a free, free Wi-Fi connection for any, any network. Although if you're on O2, you don't even have to log in. Um, and on top of that, building on our 25 million customers, we've got a significant presence in, in offering the latest new upgrades and options. So that's 450 retail stores, but that's also a significant online presence and through kind of our mobile applications like O2 Priority, when you see the queue up outside Cafe Nero for your free coffee every Tuesday. So fundamentally, it's, it's a real, real wide variety of, um, of products that we support. And crucially, as part of that, the, the incidents we have to support, uh, you know, the technology varies greatly. So I wish I could say we moonlighted as the England rugby team. Um, we don't, but I use this as an example of the diversity in a rugby, rugby team where you'd have the wingers flying down at speed and, and the scrum halves being the kind of bulky, bulky power lifters. And, and crucially, you're never going to succeed with, with a rugby team all of, all of the same style, all the same standard. And, and we've had to adjust to that with our versatility in the fact that we manage so many different major incidents across both the IT and, and radio network space and everything in the middle. Um, so as part of that, we've deliberately skilled people from both the radio network side and the IT side, and a few kind of all-rounders in the middle to, to really get experience from everywhere. As part of that, so yeah, team of 12, um, working 24 hours a day, 365. And I, I was quite shocked myself, because uh, I have the least amount of experience, but 269 years cumulative experience between the 12 team members, so they, they know back to the days of uh, you know, old BT cell net transitioning all the way through. So as part of that, and, and touching on 24-7-365, we've found, I think it's probably been a theme across all of it, the outlook has changed. You know, we're not expecting a 9-to-5 standard world anymore, and that's why we have to adjust. Um, and an example of that, I mean, is you, you know, you're busy on your phone at work, you then go out and, as I conveniently pick the O2 Arena, you're going out to a concert, um, concert there that night, and then you're heavy, heavily data streaming uh, on there into the night. And, and the expectation is it needs to be there 24-7. And I think one quite interesting experience I saw recently was when WhatsApp had a global outage a few months ago. Now, typically, and because I'm a bit of a geek of liking to understand about major incidents at other companies, you know, I kind of had a look around, saw the complaints. Now, people were annoyed, definitely. But typically, most of the people were venting complaints that they go to a competitor. They, you know, I'll, I'll send a te text message, or I'll, I'll send a Snapchat, I'll call someone as a last resort kind of thing. Um, and that's where it seems to be a bit different with a phone network, where if it goes down, unless you're extremely uh, careful and have an extra SIM card for a rival network in your pocket, you know, you don't really have any other option. And, that, and that's the mantra, you know, I'm really trying to drill in to my team that truly every second counts because people have no other option, essentially, and they've evolved their life without their phones. Um, so building on kind of major incident, uh, our major incident management team, we, we realized um, pretty quickly we wanted to make improvements to our communications. Now, historically, it had always been a bit of a challenge to agree funding um, for communication improvements because we're a communications company. Why are we going to sell our bread and butter and get another team instead to, to work on it in our place. Um, and I think that was the harder sell. And also one thing that I think we've seen in recent press hasn't always worked well. 
BA is an example of uh, last month with uh, their May bank holiday turmoil, and as we see now costing them 80 million pounds in compensation claims. Now, a really interesting quote I found from them, uh, quoted by the BBC News, was that they were unable to communicate to customers because fundamentally they were basing issues when their systems failed to then communicate to customers. So you see the examples of, of it being exacerbated. And one of the main reasons that we've been selling using a third party like X Matters for our communications, because we're going to be scuppered otherwise. If our systems are down, how can we communicate? And ultimately, leading to situations like this of confusion, where you're going to an airport because the only information you've got is from the national news. But to be fair, it probably got worse for them, where the staff didn't even know what was going on because they again use the same internal system. So again, it highlights even more the importance of why, for O2 as a communications company, we were so focused on we wanted to move away from using our own tools. So previously, and this was two years ago, um, we were using our own tools at that stage. Now, thankfully, we learned and got X Matters invo involved before um, a big issue similar to BAs. Um, and we'd kind of fudged together large amounts of different areas using our communication skills. So we had a tool that we kind of hooked into our SMS platform, so we'd send SMSs. We'd have an online library that we'd use to kind of template instant communications. We'd have another tool that we'd input the information for communications. We then send it off to Outlook uh, to then adjust. We then use a different spell checking and an adjusting tool from there for finally sending it off. Um, so we worked out, and in fact, this was with the help of X Matters, it was 56 clicks uh, to send, and basically to send to each, each channel our communications, and, and 16 minutes ultimately that took. Now, crucially, these are the people that are also managing the major incident. They're not a separate communication team. This is uh, them trying to spin two plates of managing the major incident, getting a technical call set up, while having to, having to balance and send 50, do 56 clicks and, and jump across six tools. Um, and finally, as we touched on, and I think a vast example of the, the kind of everyone getting onto a conference call, it took us 20 minutes to engage key stakeholders because it was quite a manual process of us having to ring around people. And fundamentally, that's 20 minutes that we could be saving in, in fixing major incidents. So we were pretty clear that, that we need, this was an area we did need to improve. And, and we kind of leveled it down to three things we wanted. So one, automation. We wanted something that my major incident manager wouldn't have, to, uh, wouldn't have to do multiple different things because they could automate bits of it and crucially focus on fixing the major incident. Two, simplicity. Again, the case of the two spinning plates. If you're managing a major incident, the last thing I want them to do is to use the most overly complicated tool and system to, uh, to fix it. And finally, building on for simplicity, I didn't want six tools. I wanted one tool and its ultimate aim of a big red button that you could hit that would cascade to the world. So we started building that Rex Matters, and, and I wanted to kind of talk about the four key areas that we've really tried to look at and improve in our, in our incident communications through Rex Matters. So the first one is the Rex Matters mobile application. Now, as we've gone through the BA example, I don't want to rely on O2's communication system. So as with X Matters, you can send SMS messages. That's great until our SMS platform fails and none of our team are going to be receiving any SMSs. Thankfully, and again, similar with, with phone calls, it, you know, if our system fails, it's only as good as the, the last chain in, in the system. Um, so thankfully, the mobile application for X Matters takes O2 out of the loop. And it means that as long as someone has Wi-Fi, they will still be notified. And we don't have to worry about any O2 influence. And if there is a failure in O2, um, they're not being communicated to. And, and that's had really good take up across the staff, up to kind of CIO level of using the X Matters app to, um, to kind of get their latest information. Secondly, is a target of communications. And, and this feel, feels into the automation bit. So we previously have to send manual messages to each certain groups. Now, again, when we're trying to fix a major incident, trying to adjust multiple different tools to do that is, is a right pain in the ass. So thankfully, as part of X Matters, we, we writ script, had written scripts to, um, to essentially automate all of that. So I've got two examples of here. One of these is an internal, um, internal communication, and one is an external communication that we send. Now, 
aside from the kind of look and feel which is different, they're talking about the same issue. They pull across the key fields, for example, the start date and end date, but the content is very different. So here in the internal example, we talk about very specific network components that have failed, and RNCs and BSCs that aren't going to mean anything to anyone. In the, in the customer update, we talk a lot more about, well, what does that mean for the customer? How, you know, how are you going to be impacted? And crucially, what other alternatives do you have? And that differing audience is all done from us clicking that one button X matters, because X matters will work out, ah, this property is impacted, and therefore we will send to this area using, these, uh, using this uh, agreed templated content. So that's, again, a real area that we've, we've seen improvement. Uh, the third is with automatic escalation, and this is where the examples are the 20 minutes to engage, um, engage teams on a conference call. Thankfully now, and again akin to us trying to hit this big red button, we can now fire off multiple different contact routes to different teams, and crucially when they don't reply, it's only taking then our pre-configured two minutes to escalate to the next person. Finally, templates. So as part of uh, what we do, that was previously in a separate library, now we've got 200 different scenarios based in X Matters that we can pre-populate depending on the scenario. So for example, let's say the MyO2 application, which is a kind of self-service customer application that you can use to check your balance, check your data. Multiple different things can go wrong with that. And we'll have 10 different scenarios in X Matters depending on what's going wrong. So we can very quickly understand it. And it, it crucially means that my major incident manager doesn't need to be thinking of, oh, actually, it's that user experience, so I need to type in this bit. They can hit one of the 10, and they can actually focus on fixing the problem. So what improvements did we see as part of that? Now, as we've seen, that was the six internal tools into one using X Matters, 56 clicks to seven in actually sending the messages. And the, my favorite one is the 16 minutes to two minutes to send communications. And, and that really matters for one, our customers, because we've seen that they're more, although no one's happy when we see an outage, they're much more thankful by the fact that we can say, actually, we're aware of this, we're proactively telling you, hopefully before they've even noticed. Um, and two, for us to reach out to customers. So for example, social media will now get this within two minutes of us declaring it, which will mean that they can very proactively reach out to customers. And, and for example, if there's specific information we need social media to tell customers, we can use these communications and we can get people up and running a lot quicker. And finally, this, this, um, this key one for kind of engaging stakeholders, I'm realizing it may be slightly cut off here, but yeah, 20 minutes to three minutes um, to engage key stakeholders. And, and when we talk about those examples of, of conference calls and everyone joining every few minutes, now, I haven't got to the mature world of only having four people on a conference call with management needing to know, but it does mean that we can have everyone in three minutes. We're not gonna have people twiddling their thumbs for 10 minutes, waiting for an update, which we don't have to repeat. It means we can get all the information. And, th and this three minutes was, was from our last kind of big test where we got all senior management up to kind of head of operations and below on a call. And we were, we were talking kind of 30 key stakeholders as a test that we got on within three minutes with examples of where they hadn't replied and we got the escalation on straight away. So what does the future hold? Um, and essentially, this is where I really want to build on our key aims from the start over automation and simplicity. Um, building on this dream of a big red button, I think at the moment we've cracked this big red button for saying, actually, we know what we're going to do to communicate. We've got our templates to do it. Building on from that, and we've talked about integrations, we're still working on our integration with Remedy. And what I'd love to do is when we're getting alerts from monitoring tools to automatically generate communications, which takes the incident manager out of the loop completely because we know something's failed from the alert, and it can react to it straight away. So that brings that two minutes down to a few seconds. Um, crucially, as part of that, I, I want to start using X Matters more for engaging technical teams. So typically, we've used it at the moment to cascade information out um, to, um, for stakeholder updates. What we typically have is one contact for each area, or one group, sorry, on call area that we would, we would speak with. What we've learned, especially with new starters, is uh, the amount of, oh, actually, but you may want his support, or actually, but you may want their support. And if we can build that knowledge into X matters instead of into individual people's minds, that will be crucial in, in one, allowing new starters to get ahead, and two, it saves us the five minutes. So even if I know it's in my head, I still need to proactively manually contact them. 
So where we've built the automation into it, stakeholder updates, that's where I really want to bring it in for technical updates as well to streamline the whole effect. And I think I probably sped up a bit of time because I do realise it's lunch next. So uh, no, thank you very much. <laughs>